the channel and welcome back to some more reactions it's good for your health to react on stuff now do you like survival do you like going out and camping in the most weirdest forest out there do you want to feel manly eating worms and different types of gooey insects and killing babies for your survival do you want to be big grizzle you might have to do that when you are in the wild now Sometimes things can go wrong and these are the 10 survival hacks But 10 survival hacks that actually can kill you that will kill you. So you don't trust these. Let me go back in time And yeah, hopefully You know, I you know me me I, I'm, I'm trying to bring the, the humanity's worst ideas and worst part of humanity out to you So here's a gesture from me to you Let's go Go. Tap. Oh, nice. 10 survival life hacks that could actually kill you. Okay. Number 10. In case of lightning, lie on the ground. Huh? If you ever find yourself outside during a that? lightning storm, do not lie flat on the ground. Ever. <laughs> Why? Well, for one, this survival tip is mostly based on well-meaning but wrong assumptions. For example, it's a common misconception that lightning only strikes the tallest objects. On the okay. contrary, lightning can hit anywhere, from buildings and trees to parking lots and the soil. Therefore, okay. instead of saving you, lying flat on the ground could actually <laughs> kill you. You see, so when lightning like, strikes, a uh, ground wait, wait, wait. charge could spread out in every direction, right from the base of the air. So, so you're saying, I see a lightning storm, I'm like, oh my goodness, I'm gonna lay down, and the next thing I know, I have more than half a probability of dying. Perfect, struck, man, perfect. Almost like a ripple effect. Ooh, Lying down that? is even dumber and more dangerous than you'd think, since you're basically providing more potential points on your body for the lightning to hit. Oh my goodness. Here's what you should do instead if you're caught outside. Mm. Try to crouch down in a ball-like position with your head tucked in and your hands over your ears. Well, no. This will keep your body's contact with the ground to a bare minimum. Otherwise, please find shelter. Better. Number nine, shelter. making a fire in a cave. <laughs> okay. Contrary to their name and the fact they discovered the advantage of fires, cavemen learned through trial and error that bringing a fire deep into their cave was okay. dangerous. Today, though, many oh, wait. I, I should, I should turn them off, just in case I'm stupid. Believe yeah, it's, it's a okay. good idea. The truth is, you should never ever start a fire in a cave. Yeah, that, that, it's extremely dangerous because, would, among other smoke. things, the heat resulting from the flames causes yeah. rocks to expand and break, which can cause cave-ins. But oh. that's not all. It's well known that fires can also produce carbon See? monoxide, a poisonous gas that has no smell or taste and therefore is especially dangerous. Oh my goodness. It produces mild progressive frontal headaches and drowsiness. Oh, you know what is that? You know what is that? Oh, gas in a done? confined space can lead to death. And guess what? Caves tend to be very confined spaces with Okay. No the, 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 the painful part is you trust your fucking instinct that, oh, I read this on a fucking newspaper. I'm going to try it. With all of your good honesty heart, you try to fucking do something good and instead you fucking die. Fresh air ventilation. Perfection. It's not surprising then that when a fire starts in a cave, it spreads easily. Too bad it's not equally easy to oh stop. My goodness. In 2019, when a cave fire broke out in the Los Padres National Forest in California, the blaze burned 4,300 acres down to the ground in less than 24 hours. That's a lot. Climbing a tree if a bear is chasing you. Okay. You, wonder you know what? I actually... I... Genuinely, legit thought this can work, and now what the fuck? Bring what you should do if you ever encounter a bear. The perfect answer is to basically fight your instincts. Easier okay. said than done. I bet most people think that at the sight of a grizzly bear, you should run as fast as you can away I from mean, it that's and find an out of reach spot, like a tree or a telephone pole. But that, my friends, is the easiest way to end up in the bear's claws. And the yours. claws. What you want to do in that situation is to avoid close contact with the wild animal at any cost. Oh so shit, oh, oh, there's a bear, let me go to it. Hello, Mr. Bear, would you like some cookies dipped in honey? You stupid twit. First of all, the US National Park Service website advises to slowly back away. Any nice. sudden movement could startle the animal, triggering a chase response, in which case you're toast. Climbing Perfection. a tree is also a terrible idea. This is because there's no way a man could win over a bear in a chase. You're scared wait, 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 wait. I just realized, what the fuck is this no baby cub doing? Or is it a big bear? bear. A chase. Fuck. Your scared brain will probably tell you to find the highest place to hide, oh, but no, don't no, do it. No, Bears no, are no. excellent climbers, and if they're already after you, there's a high chance they'll follow you up there. You're dead. Number seven, peeing on a jellyfish sting. I saw that too. 
a big grizzle doing that. I'm gonna say it is wrong here. Being stung by a jellyfish sucks. The pain is so intense that even if you have the slightest chance of making it better, you'll try it. That's probably why the myth that peeing uh. on jellyfish stings eases pain spreads so easily. It no. also might be due to the fact that urine contains compounds like ammonia and urea. These substances may be helpful for some stings, however your pee contains mostly water, which dilutes the ammonia and urea too much. No, don't do that, okay? Don't put your hand out there and start peeing your hand. That is wrong! Be effective. Additionally, the what pee the may actually worsen the sting. It is in fact the jellyfish tentacles that cause the pain. They have stinging cells, okay. nematocysts that contain venom. The sodium in your urine, together with the speed of the urine stream, oh. could move the stingers around the injury and trigger the cells to release even more venom. Yeah, now with the average jellyfish you. sting, the worst thing that can happen is a trip to the hospital covered in pee and an insanely painful rash. But what if the venom of that jellyfish was particularly poisonous? Peeing on it might literally be the difference between life and death. Okay, you, you stupid Number then. six. Drinking. Bear Grizzle has changed my life. You Bear Grizzle, I damned you from making, from giving me false information. Hey. Not only will drinking urine not save you from dehydration, it can actually endanger your already critical conditions. Oh my to goodness. understand why, first you should probably know that depending on the environment and the conditions of the person, an adult can survive up to a week without water and okay. three weeks without food. Whereas okay. among the lovely things that might happen to you if you drink pee, there are sore gums, nausea, and failing organs. Oh. Now I'm not saying that drinking a few sips of the stuff will kill you, but drinking urine for a prolonged amount of time, oh, even okay. for a day or two, will cause the opposite effect. If I drink my pee once, in a day, and that's it, I have a chance of surviving. Cool. Of what you want, dehydration. You will add extra work to your kidneys that will use more water to um, process the waste in the urine uh, and it gives you to survive. Oh, and did you know that pee is full of bacteria? No, Among I the most famous that. That's why I don't drink which it. Which is known to cause food poisoning yeah. and gum infection. I don't know about you, but I can think of better ways to go. Uh, Number five. Cactus. What? Cactus? What One of the most infamous tips on how to survive in the desert if you have no fresh water and are in desperate need of liquid is drinking cactus water. I won't After do that. all, it can't be that different to coconut water, can it? No, well, no. actually, cactus water <laughs> is very different from coconut water and natural water mean? in general. For example, in order to avoid aggressions from thirsty wild animals, most cactus species protect their spongy flesh not only with spines, okay. but with acids and potential alkaloids too. These substances make the beverage too sour to tolerate for the human body and oh, are taxing on the fuck. kidneys. So you're saying get water wherever you go. You don't have water, you wait for a week until you die. Perfection. Ingest it. The alkaloids in particular also include morphine, strychnine, quinine, morphine. ephedrine, and nicotine, which have physiological effects on people. Additionally, the flesh of cactus causes vomiting, Fair diarrhea, nice. and even paralysis, which in an emergency situation can lead to death. Oi, what the hell? Number four. Suck the venom of snake. You... Okay, if you've seen too many Indian shit, Indian skits, Indian movies, and dramas, you would go for this shit. Them people are weird. I've seen their... I've seen the survival videos. They're like, oh, venom. <laughs> suck all of the venom out of it, fucking idiots. You go suck your... Aches. You've probably read this in books, watched shit. it in movies, played it in yeah, see, 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 see. and maybe even seen it in documentaries. But the possible, and wait for it while remaining as still as you can, or by getting someone to take you to the hospital as soon as possible. In whichever case, My try goodness. to keep your movements to a bare minimum, since moving will make your blood, infected with venom, run faster around your body. So, so if, I, if, I, if a fucking venomous snake bites me, I'll be like, eek! I am just like still there. You want to avoid Perfect. that since if the venom spreads quickly, it won't just stay at the point of the bite. This okay. brings us to the next point. Sucking the venom from the wound is completely useless. In fact, but, by doing so, you can make your situation even yeah, more- Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, already a dude is lying down and I'm bare minimum dying and I'm like, <gasps> sucking all of the goddamn venom and my mouth is full of venom and I'm, I'm, I'm about to kill myself too. It's like suicide in a heroic way. Or serious. Perfection. Your rescuer, for example, could get venom in their mouth and therefore uh, their system too, making your situation even more dire. Or, as demonstrated by a study in the uh, New England Journal, of medicine, you could also damage nerves and blood vessels, which would then lead to infection. Don't waste time and try to find the nearest hospital. But what if you're fucking number away three? From wearing plastic bags to lose weight. Huh? On paper, plastic bags, waist trainers, and even Wait. more sophisticated sauna suits are a great way to lose weight in a short period of time. Okay. People who recur to these kinds of remedies will see what their weight this? decrease rapidly. This is why it's easy to fall for this dangerously rapid solution. However, okay. weight loss can come at a high price. In practice, sauna suits increase your sweat, hence a loss of water while exercising, which is why it's touted as a hack. 
Basically, all the weight loss you'll see on your scale is not caused by fat burning, but dehydration. Oh, Therefore, no, not no, only will your body no. immediately regain what you've lost, you know, when you rehydrate again, but you'll also put your body into extreme danger. The sweating technique can ruin your thermoregulation since dehydration increases the body's core temperature. Cardiovascular functions, renal functions, muscle strength and endurance can also be damaged. In You're saying do not use the sauna suits because they are the reason you have a chance to die. Or get your health worsened. In extreme cases, Fucking excessive hell. sweat loss can cause hypothermia and high levels of myoglobin in the blood, oh all of which can goodness. potentially kill you. Stop if you really want to be the weight, you might as well seek traditional training and professional advice. No, this is wrong. Number two, using ice to quench thirst. Thirst can really drive it's you me. insane, so whatever Th quenches what it, even temporarily, may seem like a good option. That's However, me. you should never ease your thirst with something other than water in the long term. Still, what do you do when there's no portable water around you and you really don't want to drink your own urine? An old survival hack suggests finding Perfect. some ice, presuming you're not in a desert, and consume that instead. It doesn't seem like such a bad idea, does it? After all, ice is water. Yeah. But you see, although ice is a form of water, it's not really the same thing. Shut the, difference the fuck up, it's water. Is important. In fact, according to the World Health Organization, no. unlike water, ice is unmineralized and has low density. In the long term, oh ice consumption could lead to some serious illnesses. Homie, I am wrong with you. See, we there are a lot of people who drink glacier water daily or maybe even slushies of glacier water. They're living longer life than us. Piece of shite. Stop. Like infections and cardiovascular Stop. problems, which in the most severe of cases can lead to heart failure. Oh my this is goodness. due to the need to eat oh ice. You should, go, you should go and pray to God that you have some... You know what, Being science anemia, is dumb which sometimes, can then cause but these I am science, so I'm gonna clinic. accept that. On top of everything, ice does not even hydrate you anywhere near the same level yeah, as water, makes me more so thirsty. while it can work temporarily, it is not a safe replacement for a true water source. This Number one, awesome. remove a sharp object from a wound. Huh? Here's a tricky one, especially if it ever happens to you. I've Having a foreign a object in stabbed into your body must be one of the most uncomfortable and painful things imaginable. Uh -huh. The body will feel the need to remove it from the affected parts. Still, you must be stronger and resist temptation. In fact, every expert will tell you that removing a knife or any other impaled object from the wound can only make things worse and in some cases even movies. cause death. I'm in fact, once the object is stabbed into the body, it acts like a plug to the injury and reduces blood loss. The moment you remove it, the blood will flow freely into an acute hemorrhage. Nice. The best thing to do is simply to apply pressure around the wound and the object with a piece of fabric and wait for an ambulance. Oh my goodness. So, those so you're saying you don't, you stop living life, you fucking get chased by a bear, you just stay there and you're like, bear, I'm stronger than you. Okay, you fucking don't drink ice water, directly ice. You don't drink your urine when you st you're stuck in a desert. Okay, you don't pull stuff stabbed in your body when you are there, when they're stabbed and you're in pain. Okay, what else was that? You, okay, these are stuff I don't get, but what, what about... Like, fucking hell, you know what? I'm, I'm done, I'm done. Humanity is stupid anyways. You know what? I'm not going out of my room. I'm only gonna drink mineral drinking water out of a fucking fancy bottle. Or you don't know, Osas water or whatever. I'm not gonna leave my room. Games, games, and gaming life will save me. Fuck y'all. I'm done with this life. Bullshit people. That's it. Thank you for me until then. Until next time, I see you. I keep smiling. I hope you have a beautiful day and a better life ahead of you. Because I am going to go ask my mum to make me a smoothie and some ice cubes on it. I don't know why I put ice cubes on my smoothie, but I live in a city and I don't do stupid shit when I go out living in wildlife. So, toodaloo-doo.